Today I have three Frosted Winter Wonderland DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Project number one is a Frosted Winter Centerpiece. All right, we're gonna start off with some frosty snowy picks. And these are some that I got on clearance last year. These are some Dollar Tree poinsettias. And then I have one of these garland pieces or swag pieces and then some ribbon and some burlap strips and you're gonna make sure when you get this um, mine came from a thrift store but you can use you know whatever you have repurpose something that you're not using anymore you know pull that old stuff off and just go with it I'm flipping it over to make sure everything's flat on the bottom and then flipping well pushing out all of the little pieces kind of to the side here trying to make it balanced so there's the same amount on both sides I'm gonna use this sign from the thrift store to make a base so that this can be easily removed from the table when it's time to eat. I'm going to use some tinsel. Green is good. I didn't have any solid green, so I got this, well, these tinsel-looking pipe cleaners, I should say. And I'm going to just glue these down here, and that's how we're going to attach it to the wreath. So nothing falls apart. So after the glue has set up, bend those little ends upward, put it on the table, flip this over, put the bottom of your swag piece down on top of your pipe cleaners and you can just feed those through there um, you can see me poking those through there it's easy to do I started in the middle but you can start on the end if you would like and then work your way down to the other end whatever works best for you so now it's attached we're gonna leave those little pipe cleaners sticking out because we're gonna add our picks right to those I'm going to put them where I want this centerpiece to be balanced on both sides so I'm trying to make sure that everything is sort of symmetrical on the sides I do have two more picks that I'm going to add in just a moment and you'll see that so that these picks are going to make kind of an X in the middle and I hope this view is okay for you I think you can see everything really well this way you can see it and um, tell what I'm doing and I'm just twisting those in with the same pipe cleaners I already had. All right, so I'm gonna loosen this one up, add another one across here, and then another one across here. So now we have an X, and both sides will look exactly the same. They all fit down in that pipe cleaner. Be sure you use the full length pipe cleaners. Do not cut them in half or you will not have enough for this. You could always use something else to attach them down if you'd like. I have some of this burlap ribbon that I am going to cut into four 12 inch pieces. It is wired and that is helpful to know um, because it's going to help us for what we're going to do with it. I'm going to take this, now the top one, that white one came from Hobby Lobby. I got it 50% off in the clearance section and then I got um, that bottom piece that right there that came from Dollar Tree and you can get that pretty much all year round I believe and then we're just gonna stack them and you can put whichever color you want on top you don't have to use the burlap but since I like rustic in my house I want to keep that theme so that everything coordinates from my tree you know to the centerpiece to the wreaths um, any little decor pieces that I have we're gonna start by attaching it just with the branches you just twist your little greenery branches that are under there and you just pinch your what your ribbons and then twist it into that you see how that works and then pull those apart so you can get both colors where you can see them the white and the beige and then we're gonna go to the other side wind it in the branches like that and then loop it over onto the other side so if you would like to use a what would that be 12 12 12 and 12 48 inches so two feet of ribbon if you wanted to um no, four feet I think it would be four feet you know what I mean if you want to use one length of ribbon instead of cutting it into four parts is what I am saying you can certainly do it that way but um I wanted to do it this way because I save a little bit of ribbon and I'm almost out of that white okay 
Yeah, were y'all shocked when I said I got it from Hobby Lobby? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I couldn't, I haven't been able to find any white like that, so, and I really wanted it, so it was worth it at 50% off. And the rolls are usually pretty good size. So I'm going to continue down all the way to the end. Now the two tips of these, the outer ends of these are kind of sparse, like those trees that you get at Dollar Tree, have that one long branch on the end. I just folded it back uh, underneath to get rid of that little silly looking sad piece. And now this one is going to be twisted here on the end. Okay, now we're going to take these poinsettias from Dollar Tree. And they look a little sad. You can double them up, which is what I will do here shortly and show you how to do that um, just to give it a little more impact. Otherwise, it kind of gets lost in the rest of the greenery, right? You know what I mean? So we're going to fix it so that it, it gets a little more attention. And it almost looks like one flower if you kind of interlace those little petals. You can do it however you want. And you don't have to use white if you're going to use a different color theme. Just use different colors. Now, I had some of this frosted fern left from last year, and I think it came from Dollar Tree, pretty sure that it did. And I thought, you know, this would be a good transition between that evergreen background and the snowy top to put this in here. It's sort of iridescent, it's frosty looking, and it really is pretty. I mean, on its own, it might not look too great, but when you cut it into pieces and then use it as a filler, it looks really nice. What do you think? Do you like that? I think it looks good there. Now, I intentionally left my center open because that's where we're going to put our candles. But this is what we have so far. Okay, so I have a couple little pieces of those ferns left because I'm going to need to use those in just a second. Now, the X on the bottom is going to give us somewhat of a base to put our candles on. They're flameless candles, and that is definitely what you want to use. Safety first. Yeah. I don't want to use regular candles with hurricanes over the top, although you could. But this centerpiece is kind of a quick one to make. It's time for new candles, y'all. So you can see, you just kind of balance them on there. And this is how it looks when it's lit up. And then you can see those little extra gaps there. Just go ahead and use the extra pieces and of greenery and just tuck in there. And no one will even know. Okay, so now this is the overview of what that centerpiece looks like. I think it is beautiful. I think it is rustic and elegant at the same time, and it would look, look absolutely beautiful on a coffee table, uh, a table behind a sofa, or on your table, on your dinner table. What do you think of this one, of this project? I really like it. I'd love it if you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I do two to three videos every single week and I am very active in the comments section so I love talking to you and getting to know you and I'm well on my way to 10,000 subscribers so if you're a viewer and you like this please consider subscribing it really helps me a lot and I appreciate it. Project number two is going to be a lantern and swag. So here's my lantern. It had glass in it, but it was broken, and I took it all apart, got it from the thrift store, cleaned it up. You can see that it's about 20, 24 inches. I'm going to use a variety of picks, same types and colors of what we used in our centerpiece because, you know, we want it to all look similar. A lot of these pieces are just little bits and pieces that I've taken off of projects from last year and the year before, and I keep them. Now I'm going to make some picks. You've seen me do this before. You're just going to add in stuff to kind of beef it up. I'm going to make the top a little bit thicker than the bottom, just for my own purposes. I'm going to zip tie it in the middle, clip it off so that we have a nice little swag here. Typically with the swag, you see that the top is going to be a little bit shorter than the bottom, and the bottom is going to hang down more. You can certainly do this any way that you want to. You'll need a longer swag if your lantern is taller, or you can make it shorter, whatever you like. But you see how I'm inter intertwining those petals? Now that looks like one big poinsettia, just like that. 
Sometimes you'll have enough room if you have thin enough wires that you could just push those in there and you don't even need any glue, which makes it perfect. But if you need some glue and you need to use additional zip ties, go ahead and do that. I'm going to use a black pipe cleaner and kind of weave it up in there so that I will have something to attach it to the top of my black lantern. This way you won't be able to necessarily see that once it's attached. Follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. I'd love to see you there. More of this white ribbon and we're going to make a bow. Now this is a wired ribbon and it is picking up every little piece of stuff. That's the one bad thing about flocked pieces. They just make such a big mess. We're going to turn this fabric over and over on itself and we're going to have two loops on this end, two loops on this end, and then we're just going to cut it off. We'll make a separate tail so don't be concerned about that. This is about eight inches. Then I'm going to do the same thing only make it just a hair smaller with this. Now the jute doesn't have any wire in it, or not the jute, this burlap, it doesn't have any wire in it, but because we're making it so short, it's going to stand out nicely on its own, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. We're going to fold this over and over on itself as well, till there are two loops on each side, just the way we did the other one, and cut it off. So you can see here where your center is going to be, just like that put your little loose piece on the bottom. We're going to fold over the white piece to give us a line where we need to cut. We're going to cut through the wire and just into the fabric. Okay. Now we're not going to need to do that with, with that burlap because the burlap has already got little notches in the side. It's naturally notched. Take a zip tie, flip it over, and then cinch it up on the back. You can pleat this in your hand if you want. I'll show y'all how to do that at some point. Um, but for now, I just wanted to go ahead and get this little bow done and make it a little bit wider on the top than it is on the bottom. But you can move that around, but I'll show you that at another time. So be sure that you cinch it up where the little clamp thing is on the, the back or the bottom so that you don't see it. Start on the bottom and pull out your little loops. Pull them out and away from each other and you can kind of twist it side to side a little bit and that'll help it stand out. And then go up to your top loop and you can do the same thing there. You can tuck that little extra piece in or you can cut it off. And that's all it is to making that bow. Very simple, very simple. Now for the tails I'm just going to use a long piece of that burlap which already has a little curl in it. I'm going to fray the ends a bit because I want a straight edge here. I'm going to fray just pulling those little pieces off one at a time and then I'm going to make a straight little edge and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just pull some of those little pieces loose and you have a little straight edge just like that. You can just lay that down. It's going to be several inches longer than the white one, and that is fine. We'll pinch that up in the middle, and this is what's going to be our tails. I'm taking a piece of jute that I keep on my work table, and I'm going to tie a few knots in the back so that our tails are attached firmly and nothing comes loose when we fluff. That's simple enough. Leave those ends long because you're going to need to use those pieces to tie onto your little swag piece. I'm just cutting these at a slant. These are actually not going to hang down. I've decided to use these uh, as part of the bow to make it look a little bit bigger and you'll see how we do that once it's attached to the lantern. But for now go ahead and tie your bow on and then you can cut it off. You can see my lantern has a door and we are on the front. Be sure that you are working to the front of your lantern. I'm going to lift up this swag. You can bend that top a little bit so that it will sit right there on the neck and then wrap those pieces of pipe cleaner around to secure them down. 
Now is the time you can look in there and cut off any little things that don't belong, little stems and such, and go ahead and fill in the spots that need a little extra. So I had some extra snowy pine cones and I'm just gonna add those here and there to fill it out. Go ahead and grab those pieces of fern and tuck them in where they are needed and they'll make a very pretty swag piece. Now I know that this is not long enough for this lantern. I can clearly see that. I'm gonna fix it. So you can see I'm just taking the white tails here and just rolling them under with my fingers. And because they're wired, they're gonna stay up there pretty nicely. It's just gonna make like a little, a little curl. Same thing with that piece of jute on the top, just made a little curl up there and it looks really cute. Now we're going to use these two pieces, little snowy limbs, and I'm going to be putting one at the top, and then I'm going to put one at the bottom, and that's going to help elongate our piece. So don't panic. You can always add a little something to it. Now we have to fill in the lantern. So I'm going to take a piece of this fabric, uh, I think it's an automotive section at Dollar Tree, and excuse my head, I'm just going to fold it and tuck it in there to make a snowy bottom. And then I'm going to use a pick and a couple of battery operated candles to light it up. And this is how it looks. You can always make yours longer. You can add a bigger bow. You can put more ribbon in it. Make it your own. That's what this channel is about. It's making it our own. And that's what I did. And I love it. And it's so cute. It's a very pretty piece. And so inexpensive compared to what you would pay in a store for a piece that big. Project number three is our Woodland Snowman. Okay, we're going to use some flat white paint, spray paint. We're going to use two pumpkins that were, they're very sad looking. We're going to take the hardware off the pumpkins. And we're going to repurpose these. I'm going to sand off that glitter. And then you have to be sure that you wipe this down. Because if you don't, then when you get ready to paint it, it's going to smear black dust all into your paint. And you will have a very nasty, dirty looking finish. So I'm just, I just put a little bit of alcohol spray on a paper towel. And I'm just wiping it off really well. Then I'm going to put some dowels down on the inside. It's just foam on the inside. Spray paint. Now this is two coats and it still looks kind of gnarly. But I'm going to be putting some more paint on it so it's not a problem. I'm going to use a utility knife to cut this part of my pumpkin so that when I flip it over and put the other pumpkin on top of it, it will sit flat. Rather than being like having a big gap in it, it's just going to be more secure if we do it that way. And it's going to look better, I think. Now I know plenty of people say a snowman has three parts. He has a bottom, which is the biggest, and a center that's a little bit smaller, and then a head on the top. Well, my snowman does not have that. I live in the south, and we're lucky if we get one section. I have a short, squatty little snowman, but I think he's precious in the end. So to attach these pieces, I'm just going to use dowel rods and some hot glue. I think this is the best I laid it down side by side to make sure that I got it right where it needed to be and made a mark on the other pumpkin because I had to choose what I wanted to be the top and what I wanted to be the bottom. So there, just like that. Now I know exactly where my center is going to be. I hot glued a second stick in there and now it's ready to be painted with my chalk paint. So I'm just using some of my Waverly White chalk paint and I'm going over the entire thing. Once it's dry, you can go over it with some adhesive spray and some glitter if you would like that or some fake snow or whatever you want to use for this. I like the matte look and I decided to leave it that way because he's going to have some sparkle anyhow. I'm putting some glue in those holes for where the sticks go and then some all around that area. Try not to get it out where the curve starts because I don't want all that messy glue to be showing. So I'm going to put it back down on those sticks, hold it there, let it dry, and then you can see it sits very nicely and flush. All right, so I'm taking a variety of picks here. Again, I'm trying to use some of the pieces I already had from my other pieces, and then I have some garland and pit berries, and a little thrifted 
I think it's a boxwood wreath. Also my white paint and I have this little ornament. Plus I have some uh, a ribbon that's got jingle bells on it too. So I thought these pieces would be good arms. So I've just got him balanced here holding him still with some paint bottles and I'm going to use these branches for arms. Push them in there, trying to get it kind of even. And I think that looks pretty good. And then once his arms are in, it makes it a lot easier to work on him. Okay, so yeah, I think I like them. I'm just going to go ahead and push them all the way down and keep them there. I have those other little willow branches, but I don't think they would show up very nicely. It almost looks like he's a snow angel, doesn't it? Almost looks like wings. Okay. Now, you can use a little wreath like this if you have it. He's not going to have a hat. He's going to have a little wreath on his head because I think he's so cute. And this kind of makes him look a little more angelic as well. But he needs some snow. So I'm going to take that white chalk paint and a chippy brush and just dab it all over the top on the inside and the outside. I'm not looking for a complete coverage here. This is just to look like the snow fell on it. Like the rest of the things that we're using. Look at this gorgeous ribbon I got at the thrift store. It's like a burlap ribbon and it has rusty jingle bells. It's just perfect. Love it. I'm going to add some hot glue to the bottom piece and a little bit in between to hold his little scarf and then trim up the little piece here and there. And it makes a great little scarf. Mm hmm. What do you think? So far, so good. He's going to look so much better. Okay, so. I'm going to cut off one of these bells because I know that I want that ornament to go in that spot. I'm going to piece of that, put a piece of that willow branch right there and I'm going to add my bell back just kind of to the side a little bit where you can still see that it is a bell. And I think that's cute. I'm going to attach it down with some hot glue and it does stick very nicely to the burlap. Just trying to center it somewhat. Doesn't have to be perfect. This garland was a pain in the behind. So I would really recommend that you just get some of that scatter that you can get at Dollar Tree that's got all that different stuff in it. It's going to be a lot easier for you. Then I'm going to take some of the pit berry after I have glued these pine cones down and just kind of wind it around and around until I get as much coverage as I like. I'm not trying to get it super tight. I like that it's standing up in some places and poking out. My little berries are poking out and I'm totally fine with that. And this is how it looks. Cute. I'm going to put some hot glue on the back of it and just put it right down on his little head. You got to hold it there for a minute to make sure that it dries. I really like the coverage of that chalk paint on there made a big difference. Alright, so I'm just going to add a pine cone and I'm going to take some of these willow branches that I cut down and I'm just twisting them together. And I'll make two of these little bundles and put them on either side. I know you can't see very good from here so I'm just going to talk you through it. See there? Just going to tuck it in on that side. We're going to do the same thing with another little bunch on the other side just like that. A little hot glue is going to help you hold those in place. I'm going to cut another one of these in half. And put those right in there also. And then I have a couple of these little twisted pieces of the pit berry that I you know, wrapped around a pencil. You've seen that before. I'm going to do that on both sides and add another pine cone on the other side of that little rusty bell. I have a snowy boxwood pick. It matches his crown, so I think that it would be look, look pretty nice down here on his little badge, his Merry Christmas sign that he is wearing. Now we're going to pick eyes. We have a variety of beads and pieces that we can use. I think the little wood pieces will work. And wouldn't it be precious if he had a little pine cone nose? Perfect. Look at that. 
That is perfect. So we're just going to glue everything in place. And this is our little snow person. Isn't he sweet? Or our little snow angel could even be. This is how he looks. What do you think? Which one of you, these did you like the best? If you enjoyed these, you should go back and watch my most recent video, Winter Wonderland Projects, because that one has a lot of things that are so similar and they'll fit really nicely in together. Thank you so much to my new subscribers. Thank you to the ones who have been here from the beginning. Thank you for stopping by, and I will see you again very soon. Bye.